Sure, rainforests are a big deal when it comes to climate change. But there's something out there that's a much bigger deal. Something tiny and beautiful. And it just helped fill your lungs with oxygen. We're talking about plankton. Yeah, those tiny critters in the sea. Most people don't realize this, but plankton produce half of the oxygen on Earth. That's every other breath. Plankton is essential to life on the Earth. It's essential to climate on the Earth. And it's essential to sustaining human life on Earth. They're essential, and there's a gazillion of them. In fact, in just one teaspoon of seawater, you'll find 100 million planktonic microbes. And just like those amazing sea monkeys you got as a kid, they're fun to look at. And they're inspirational. A toxic algae bloom in California in the 1960s caused birds to go nuts, inspiring this film. Another species inspired this dude. And of course, there's SpongeBob's nemesis. Most of all, they're the key to life as we know it. Without them, we'd literally be sucking wind. The phytoplankton in the ocean represents approximately 50% or half of the photosynthesis that happens on Earth, right? So land plants, trees, produce 50%, and then the oceans are responsible for the other half. And some species like these guys suck up carbon dioxide, a lot. And after that, they die and sink to the seabed. Scientists call this the carbon pump. Because the plankton basically take all that CO2 we make and lock it up on the ocean floor. You know, obviously you go out into the oceans and you don't, you know, you can't really see change um, because the water looks like the water, right? It's only when you make measurements that you can see some of these changes happening. Dennis Allen has been collecting samples of zooplankton for the Baruch Institute near Georgetown for more than 35 years. Plankton are just remarkable animals, not only because every time you collect a plankton sample, uh, you see something you probably haven't seen uh, before. Um, when we first started the time series in the 1980s, uh, typical summer densities of small zooplankton were you know, in the 8 to 12,000 per cubic meter range. Today, we've seen something like a um, an average of 40% reduction in the density of these animals over time. So these zooplankton critters are declining off Georgetown. Meantime, phytoplankton, the stuff that makes the oxygen and sucks out the carbon dioxide, are also under the gun as man pumps more CO2 into the air. Spoiler alert, this part's a bummer. There could be no more ice in the summer in the Arctic, perhaps by 2050. Some models even say 2040. Same with coral reefs, right? Those models are also showing that we keep acidifying the oceans as soon as 2060, right? There may no longer be coral reefs as we know them because they will not be able to make the calcium carbonate structure because the ocean surface is too acidic. There could be significant changes occurring. So what all this means is that humanity is in the midst of a crazy chemistry experiment. Scientists like Dennis Allen and Jack DiTulio are racing to find the answers. We know the changes that are occurring here. We need to get a handle on it and better understand what factors are really driving it. And hopefully, ultimately, that will feed into decisions about how worried we should be about carbon dioxide in the air or doing other things that may be causing climate change. And we're all at the mercy of the results, from the tiniest plankton to you and me.